There has never been an NBA player quite like Trey Young. They reverse it to Trey. He's into the paint, wraps it around, somehow found Murray for three. How did you find him, Trey? Trey. No looks up down the lane to Jalen Johnson with a dunk and a foul. Great pass from Trey to Okongwu. On one hand, he's one of the most productive point guards we have ever seen, averaging 27 points and 9.9 .9 assists since his second year in the league. He is one of two players to average at least 25 points and 9 assists for their career. The other, Oscar Robertson. Yet on the other hand, he's consistently labeled overrated, not just by the media, but by his peers. He's targeted for his defense, his foul baiting, his leadership, and most most recently, it's been reported several times that teams would not want to trade for him. I will tell you from executives and just people I've talked to around the league, these calls often go something like this. Trey Young, yeah, um, what would that look like? You know, by the way, is DeJounte available? People <laughs> in the league like DeJounte's game better. DeJounte Murray actually has more value than Trey Young at this stage. How is it that a player in DeJounte Murray, who has averaged 21 points and 7 assists over his last 3 seasons, is seen as more valuable than a player in Trey Young, who has averaged 27 points and 10 assists in that same period of time? Why is it that Tyrese Halliburton, James Harden, Luka Doncic, and Jalen Brunson are all seen as offensive maestros, but Trey Young is seen as a player who can't lead you to success? Guys, this is the point in the video where you're expecting me to give you an answer. But I'm going to be completely honest. I'm just not sure what the problem is with Trey Young. I'm not sure why Ja Morant, Tyrese Halliburton, and Jalen Brunson are seen as three of the best players in the NBA, despite being high usage guards who get targeted on the defensive side of the floor. Yet Trey Young, who has similar strengths and weaknesses, is not seen as valuable in the eyes of many. I'm not saying Trey Young is the greatest basketball player ever, but he is very, very good at basketball, regardless of some of the perception. For starters, he's one of the best passers in the NBA. I mean, you don't average 10 assists a game without being an elite playmaker. And what makes Trey so good is his ability to manipulate the defense in every way possible. Just look at the amount of misdirection on this play. Bogey sets the initial screen, then Capella comes to set the second screen and pause here. With this Nets defender in position to help, he doesn't want to hit a Kongwu in the pocket initially, but instead of skipping the pass to an okay three-point shooter in Jalen Johnson, he looks off the help defender before then throwing the lob to a Kongwu. Or here, where Capella sets the screen for Trey. Two defenders go to Trey, but with Cade in a position to help, Trey looks him off like he's about to hit the corner shooter and instead throws the no-look pass to the rolling Capella. This is what makes Trey such an incredible passer. He will manipulate the defense up until the very last second before then making a perfect pass. Time and time again, in pick and roll situations, you see this happen. Like here with Pirtle, where he shows, then immediately drops back. But look at Pascal Siakam just edge over to help. Trey somehow spots his feet moving just inches, so freezes Siakam by looking at the corner shooter, then throwing the lob. Guys, I can't emphasize how ridiculous it is that whilst at full speed with a defender on his back and Pirtle to deal with, he still spotted Siakam only slightly helping over and looked him off, making a perfect lob pass in the process. Or look at him here in transition with a 4 on 3 emerging. Trey goes behind the back to freeze the magic defenders momentarily before throwing the lob to Jalen Johnson emerging from behind. And then he just does some things that aren't normal at all. 83-84%. How about that pass from midcourt to lob off the inbounds to a Kongu who caught it in another dunk. There's a reason John Collins was seen as an all-star level player early in his career, because he was lucky enough to be the beneficiary of Trey's extraordinary passing, throwing all kinds of dimes to Collins, who also helped Trey with his nuclear athleticism. But even with this being said, you don't always hear Trey's name brought up when talking about the best passes in the NBA, because I think our 
outside of Jokic and Luka, Trey's as good as anyone in the league. And I'm sure some people would even make the argument that he is the best passer in the league. So maybe it's his scoring that is the reason people aren't sold on him being that truly elite offensive talent that guys like Brunson, Jar, and Halliburton are seen as. Well, the numbers don't reflect that when you look at the top scorers since 2020. In other words, since Trey's second season in the NBA, there's not a single player on that list who people would say Trey is a better scorer than. And that's not necessarily what I'm arguing, but despite years of consistent high volume scoring on solid efficiency, all it takes is a 25 point per game season from Tyrese Maxey or Tyrese Halliburton to average an efficient 20 a game, and all of a sudden, they're better scorers and players than Trey Young. And I think his scoring can get underrated, because it's easy to look at the splits and think he's not an efficient player, but those splits don't take into account the high volume of threes he shoots and the free throws he shoots on incredible efficiency. Whether you like that style of scoring or not, it's effective. And it's not like he's a boring scorer either. This is someone who will pull from 30 feet and drill threes on good efficiency as well. Trey with a long three, hits it. He has a deep bag of finishes around the rim and just an automatic floater. It's just completely taken for granted that he gives you nearly 30 a night. Now defensively will always be the biggest question mark that looms over Trey. Can you build an elite defense around him? And I think we've seen that you can have a weak defender in your lineup if you surround them with talented defensive players. The problem for Trey, however, is all of those players that were supposed to be the perfect 3 and D archetype have all been all 3 or all D. Pause. Or in the case of guys like DeAndre Hunter and John Collins, not much of either at times. And Trey has been unfairly blamed for pretty much all of their defensive struggles when it goes much deeper than just him. Now luckily for Atlanta, they traded for the best defender of all time. Gilgis Alexander spins, fires, blocks. Gillespie to Christian Brown. Push it to Sexton, Colin downhill run. He's blocked by Daniels. Okay, maybe Dyson Daniels isn't that good, but he's the exact kind of player, along with Rissache and Jalen Johnson, who could have the length, versatility, and defensive skill set to turn this Hawks team into an elite defense, even with Trey on the floor. And if these guys pan out to be the elite defenders that they could be, and the Hawks are still unable to build a great defense around Trey Young, well then yes, we can talk about that. But as of now, we just haven't seen him surrounded with enough defensive talent for me to say he's someone you cannot build a good defense around. But I think the Hawks might be finally figuring it out. Hopefully, it's just not too late. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video and want to see more content like this all throughout the offseason and just going forward, consider subscribing. It's free. Dropping a like on the video would be much appreciated. Have a great day. Bye.